the great Dino Ranger here again, back with another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at something very special today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jurassic World Dominion War Strikers Iguanodon. Finally, we have a Jurassic Park Iguanodon toy, and I am beyond happy to finally have one. This is a species I wanted as a Jurassic Park toy for a very long time. I mean a really, really, really long time. And now Mattel has finally given us an Iguanodon, and now I finally have one in my possession. Uh, technically, it's all thanks to um, Jurassic World Dominion for introducing this new species to the movie. Uh, and yes, for those of you who may not know, Iguanodon was in Jurassic World Dominion. It was briefly seen in the prologue sequence when it um, was grazing, then it got distracted by the Giganotosaurus, and then it ran away. And then you could see the Iguanodon um, in various places in the background throughout the actual film, but it's almost like a blink and you miss it type of thing. You don't really see them that much. They're usually covered in shadows from the fires, um, or just very much in the background where you can never see them. So hopefully the Iguanodon will get a much better look on screen in future movies as I really want to see this dinosaur in its full beautiful glory um, in the future. So uh, Iguanodon is in fact a favorite dinosaur of mine, one of my favorites. Uh, it's such a classic dinosaur and obviously I've grown up to love Iguanodon, not only because it's a famous dinosaur, but only because it was the main dinosaur character from the movie Disney's Dinosaur. If any of you remember that movie, uh, it is kind of an old one, not really. It was like in the early 2000s when it came out, I believe. But yeah, I grew up with that movie, and Iguanodon was the main dinosaur in that movie. His name was Aladar, so this is my Aladar right here. I'm just super excited about this Iguanodon. Um, so yeah, a brief look at the packaging. Uh, it's the same Roar Strikers packaging we've been seeing for a while. The awesome T-Rex picture, the Dominion logo, the various, or the, the main foresty background, Roar Strikers Iguanodon. On this side, you got the logo. And on this side, you got the awesome Pyroraptor logo again. On the back, it shows you its action feature press down and roar, and you got some other figures which I do not have, but definitely do want. Megaraptor, Sinoceratops, and the Liopleurodon. So that's basically it for the packaging. Let's go ahead and break this dinosaur out because I cannot wait. All right, so here's the Iguanodon out of the packaging. Now, as all these roar strikers do, or at least some of them, they come with their tail um, unattached. So it's pretty easy to attach these tails. Um, and I do believe it is a one-time assembly. So once it's in, you can't really get it out. There we go. Nice snap. And let's see if I can align this in the right way. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. All right, I believe that's correct. I think so, yeah. So, wow. Uh, I am beyond impressed with this figure. This is, it's, it's so cool. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have a Jurassic Park Iguanodon. So this is awesome. I'm so happy it was brought into the movie as a new species, which means if it's in any movie or show, Mattel's gonna make it. So yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. This figure is awesome. Now, right off the bat, um, Obviously, when I think of Iguanodon, I think of, um, you know, Aladar from Disney's Dinosaur. But for some reason, I always picture Iguanodon with stripes. That's just how I see it. And looking at this overall, let me get a better zoom in look at this beautiful figure. The more I look at it, seeing it with the stripes, it really reminds me of the Iguanodon or the Iguanodons seen in the Walking with Dinosaurs documentary. And it also reminds me of the 
type of iguanodont that um, showed up in the Walking with Dinosaurs special, Chased by Dinosaurs, the one that had Nigel Marvin in it. And I believe the episode I'm thinking of is Land of Giants. So it was the one where Nigel Marvin was looking for the Argentinosaurus, and there are various different types of iguanodonts, not iguanodon, but iguanodonts. This is what it reminds me of also, just the look of it. So as you can see, I'm a pretty huge fan of iguanodon. <laughs> um, but yeah, this figure is amazing. I'm just blown away by the detail. That's one of the first things that catch my eye. All right, so this is a brand new figure. Let's take a look at everything one by one. So here's the face. Look, this face is awesome. Look at all the detail. And I'm pretty sure this is shrink wrapping with the skull, but also just various muscles that are shown through. Kind of reminds me of a horse a little bit. Iguanodon does have like that type of look to it. So yeah, these, the, the lines on the skull look really nice. You definitely see the little details in the pebbling of the scales. I love the just the black eye, very naturalistic like other animals. You can see some more line detail there. And you got the wonderful beak, which is painted. Looks really nice. This thing looks so cool. You can see here on the other side. Yeah, this animal looks really awesome. The nostrils are painted very well. Sculpting in the beak looks really nice. Here at the top of the head, you got some more finer pebbling detail. And here at this part of the neck, you got a lot of nice scales and actually feels very realistic right here. Very rough. And then here you got some more wrinkles in the neck, more pebbles, some more lines right here. Same on the other side. Kind of same with the top and the body which a lot of its scales on the body here are a lot more um i don't know what's the word i'm looking for a lot more you just can't spot them that much they're a lot more smoother than they are like on the legs or on the head but you can still tell that it is covered in scales so the body looks really nice especially with the rib cage showing right there, more stretch marks and the skin, especially right here. It's a nice touch, more wrinkles. You got some nice scale detail here on the battery, battery compartment area. Looks really nice, especially right here. It gets a nice amount of scale detail there, especially at the bottom. A lot more smoother down here though. Yeah, this thing is just decked out in detail like a lot of Mattel's figures. And moving on with the arms here, you can definitely see there are lots of nice uh, pebble scale detail here. You got some larger ones right there, look, which look nice. You can see a lot of muscle definition, very muscular arms, which Iguanodon pretty much did have. Um, more finer, smaller scales here, and some line work on here on the hands. And uh, the hands here, they're nicely detailed. You can definitely see nicely detailed. However, I do have some things I need to say about these hands and they're not really good, but uh, I'll get to that at a later part of this video. And here is the other side. The arms look pretty much identical. Both of these are pretty much identical. So you can definitely see all the nice scale work and it looks really good, especially if you're placed it in certain areas under light, the shadows just kind of bring out the sculpt work. And here for the legs, the legs are just covered in this nice detail work and it feels really, really cool too, very realistic. And I do like these larger plates right here on the side of the thigh here. And of course around the knee and shin area, they look really nice. Um, got some nice muscle definition on the legs as well. And here are the feet, pretty much your average dinosaur feet, I would say. Pretty detailed, even on the other side. Yeah, looks really nice, really nice. And then here we get to the tail here. This whole part of the tail that was unattached before is just covered and detail, like scale detail, and it feels really cool too, very realistic. Yeah, just 
detail all the way around. So yeah, very nice Mattel on the sculpt work on the Zequanodon. Now, for our colors, the colors are beautiful on this figure. It's very natural, matches the Iguanodon from the movie pretty well. The main color is like this lightish beige color. Then you got some dark brown on the top here from a little bit from the back of the head and on the neck and here on the back with the white stripes, which actually work really perfect on this figure. And of course you got a painted beak, which is always a plus. So yeah, the colors look really nice and even the, this beige color has a little bit of like brown hints into the plastic, which bring out the detail a little bit more. I will say though, yeah, I do agree that, you know, the brown should should have continued at least to the tail or at least to here, but I think it works good for the way it is. For an animal that's painted in a naturalistic way, um, it's kind of difficult to say bad things about this figure because it looks really nice overall. So yeah, the colors are very nice on this figure. Um, and we're gonna get on to articulation. The head is probably my favorite part of this articulation because it is like, you can move it all over the place. It is really, really smooth. You can pose it in different areas because you can make it go left and right, up and down. You can make it tilt its head. You can even spin the head all the way around. So yeah, really nice movement on the head here and it's very smooth so it's very satisfying to just move the head around in a naturalistic way and then the arms here can pretty much go all the way around full 360 um they can even pivot in and out which is nice you can see some more detail right there and then here the legs can pretty much only go that far back because the sculpt kind of keeps it from going and then it snaps in its neutral pose. And you can bring it forward. Yeah, the, the sculpt of the body kind of prevents it from moving too much, but that's all right. You know, same thing with this leg too. And then the tail can obviously rotate all the way around, but there's no really use for that. So yeah, that's basically it for the articulation. Everything else is uh, based on the action feature. And before I forget, here is the scan code for those of you who might need it, might not. Either way, I like to show these off in my videos. Now we're going to get on to the action feature, which is just like any other Roar Striker figure, um, where you just press the body down and the neck moves and it makes some roaring sounds. So hopefully I can pick those sounds up on my phone here. sounds are very nice. I'm gonna try to listen to them one more time to see if they're anything else, but to me they seem very unique sounds. They are probably not gonna be Iguanodon sounds. That dinosaur literally did not make any noise in the film other than a small little grunt in the prologue, but let me just listen to those again. All right, I believe that growl was the Giganotosaurus. Which is fine, it's just a growl. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything, but that is definitely the the Giga's growl. I don't know what that was. Could have been more Giga, maybe a Carnotaurus, I don't know, but that one sounded more like a what a, an Iguanodon might sound like. Yeah, and that one was the Giga also. That was the roar it did after Alan Grant said the biggest carnivore the world has ever seen and then the Giga rose its head up and did that um, triumphant roar that uh, I believe that was the sound that was in here so you know the Iguanodon this Iguanodon has Giga sounds but when you're using this or any kids using it they're not really gonna notice it it's just a dinosaur making dinosaur noises um, and it's not even bothering me that much so because it looks like they kind of altered it a little bit. But it's cool, you know, the head goes down. You can make it eating plants, um, which is nice, having a dinosaur do naturalistic things. It would've been cool. Iguanodon was famous for using its 
famous thumb spike on its huge muscular arms to literally jab at, um, at enemies or attackers that are trying to eat it. Um, but that's okay. I mean, we don't need to have a dinosaur with an action feature for fighting all the time. This could just be a natural, natural movement, which is cool. Um, yeah, and that was, I believe that was all the, everything I needed to talk about the Iguandon. Though there are two things also. Um, I also noticed that this Iguandon, at least looking at, looking at it from afar, definitely has a long neck which is not accurate to the real Iguanodon. Um, however, the Iguanodon in Dominion does in fact have a long, a slightly longer neck than a real one has. And I'll pop up a picture of that right now. So as you can see, it definitely has a uh, longer neck which, uh, you know, is accurate to the toy, so that means it's movie accurate. Now, the one thing that I really wanted to talk about, or one of the things that need to be talked about, are the hands. These are not Iguanodon hands. They're inaccurate, um, to the, even to the movie and as well as the real animal. They got this little spike right here, which is supposed to be where the huge thumb spike is supposed to be and it's laying against the foot, which is not what it does, and plus it's tiny. Then you got this little hanging claw right here, which Iguandan didn't really have. It did not have a hanging claw. It had like a hanging, like, digit, a finger digit here. And then they gave it two toes, which Iguandan had three toes right here instead of two. So you can definitely tell that they base it off an Iguanodon, but these hands are incredibly inaccurate, and that's kind of a, a bummer when it comes to this figure, especially for someone like me who loves accuracy, um, whether it's from Jurassic Park or um, scientific accuracy. Um, but yeah, this is not Iguanodon hands. I mean, you, there, is, there is no thumb spike here that you can use to jab at other carnivorous dinosaurs for defense. So it's unfortunate that, this, that there is a downside to this figure and those are the hands. But overall, I love this figure. Um, I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna like be harsh on this figure. I think it's awesome. Um, it's just that the hands are the only things that are, um, I guess kind of like an error on this figure. Hopefully maybe Mattel will make a Hammond Collection Iguanodon where hopefully it would have the more accurate hands. But other than the hands, this is a perfect Jurassic Park Iguanodon in my opinion. Also, um, I'm gonna pop up a picture of what an Iguanodon hand looks like right now so yeah you can definitely see how that how this is the one that Mattel gave us and then uh, the picture is what an, a real iguanodon has and the one in the movie even has the accurate hands so I'm wondering what was going on with Mattel for that and so yeah that's basically it for the Iguanodon. So let's get on to comparisons. We always start with the human. So we're gonna use my Cowboy Owen here. I think they match up pretty well. Iguanodon in real life was definitely larger. But, um, you know, for a standard Jurassic Park toy, I think this works really well. Just Iguanodon, I believe Iguanodon in the movie and in real life was definitely much larger than that so um, next we're gonna do some other dinosaurs that are in the same family or that are kind of similar to iguanodon or these kind of dinosaurs so we'll start with species that are actually in the iguanodon family i believe so first up we have the colovasaurus which you can also see here this one has the accurate hands that the iguanodon would have the thumb claw three toes than the other digit right there. But I believe right now, at least in current science, Iguanodon has three toes, but two of them actually had claws or nails on them. So here it is next to the Colovasaurus. Pretty accurate size, I think, for the most part. This was a smaller species. Next up, we have another favorite of mine, not only within the Jurassic franchise, but also a favorite species 
all together. And that is the Aranosaurus, which I believe is another type of Iguanodont. Yeah, I've always wanted to compare these together. These two look awesome together. Yeah, I love them. And obviously, Aranosaurus is definitely bigger. Um, that's just because of the, the sail that this dinosaur possesses. Yeah, these two look really awesome together. I really like this. And then now we're going to move on to other hadrosaur dinosaurs that aren't part of the iguanodont family. However, they are kind of similar in terms of lifestyle, and they're just dinosaurs that you just see hanging around in a large herd of herbivores. So the most famous from the Jurassic franchise is the Parasaurolophus. So here is the Hammond collection. Parasaurolophus. There we go. So yeah, obviously um, the, Paras the Parasaurolophus is standing um, not on all fours, or else it would have been the exact same size as the Iguanodon, but I think these two scale up very nicely in my opinion. And then last but not least, we have the Edmontosaurus, which is a dinosaur that still has yet to make an appearance in the Jurassic franchise. And yes, this size I don't think is accurate at all. Edmontosaurus was a huge animal. So yeah, Edmontosaurus would have dwarfed this poor Iguanodon. So yeah, I think they look really nice together as well. Now all we're missing in terms of hadrosaurs is a Corythosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. Anyways, everyone, that will be it for this review on the Jurassic World Dominion War Strikers Iguanodon. My final thoughts on this figure are, I love this figure. It is super awesome, again, to have a Jurassic Park Iguanodon. Mattel, you did an awesome job on this figure besides the hands, but Overall, this figure is just amazing, and I'm going to treasure this dinosaur forever. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys again for the next one.